when I start the timer, I, there's like a little switch in my mind that just switches over to focus. All of the distractions, all of the fear of getting started, all of the procrastination just stops and I'm focused on the task at hand. And that's easy to do because really I'm only committed to it for 25 minutes. G'day team, Adam Kogan here from SSW TV and today I have a special guest, uh, Jason Taylor. How are you, Jason? Good, thanks, Adam. How are you? Good to see you. I am awesome and I am looking forward to doing this. Uh, I have actually thought about doing this with you probably two or three years ago and it's been on my mind i've never got around to it i procrastinate and uh, hopefully uh, we are going to teach people uh, how you work and we're going to talk about something that i have seen you talk about for years the pomodoro technique yes for and sure. uh, i really like it because i see how you mentor some of the younger guys i i see that you are very good at being focused you churn through the hard stuff, you know, I always go to you for the super hard stuff and you're able to um, do that well. So I'll, I'll, just for the viewers out there, uh, the Pomodoro technique, and Jason, correct me where I'm wrong, is uh, I think it was created in Italy or an Italian student who couldn't uh, focus. He was trying to do things like four hours of work and just procrastinated. And uh, Pomodoro is uh, Italian for tomato, and they have a timer, uh, and it's 20 minutes or 25 minutes, and he learned how to just do them in 25-minute blocks. Yes. It became popular, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it got beyond students, and now lots of people uh, do it. I, I used to think it was for highly complex work, but I think, you know, you've convinced me it's for anything that you don't want to do. I am not very good at it. I do them. I try to do them every single week, but I know you do some every single day. So what is it and why is it important to Jason? Okay. So you, you've touched on a, a few interesting points there. Let me give you an overview of the technique and I'll share my screen. Um, I've got this little image here. So the first thing you want to do is to decide what task you want to complete and then you set a timer for 25 minutes now when you set that timer you work on that task until the timer rings and that might seem simple but this is the most important part you focus on that task for 25 minutes and you avoid distractions after that you take a short five minute break and then you can repeat that four times so it'll be about two hours in total after that you can take a longer break and then you can repeat the whole process again so you know you're looking at about a two and a half hour block uh, to, to repeat the whole process now why would you use this technique well like you said sometimes we procrastinate sometimes it's hard just to get started sometimes it's a bit overwhelming i know that when i'm preparing for a conference talk the thought of sitting down and writing that talk is a bit hard to, to manage. I have to do my research. I have to create my slides. I have to think about what I'm gonna say. I have to think about my key points. I have to practice it. I have to make sure the demos don't fail. That is so much to sit down and do, but it's not a lot for me to sit down and say, I'm gonna get started. I'm just gonna focus on it for 25 minutes. Maybe I'll write an outline. So that's my task, 25 minutes. I'll write an outline for an upcoming talk and that's easy. I'm not committing to writing a conference talk. I'm committing to writing an outline. So when I start that timer, I know I'm only committed for 25 minutes. It's easy, I can do that. And so all of those fear of getting started, fear of the how big the task is and, and the procrastination just drops away once that timer starts. And um, I think if you're like me, you'll find that 25 minutes will go too quickly and you'll be ready to start the next timer very soon. I want to ask you about the breaks. This is where I fall over. I take a five minute break, but I make a coffee. I return calls. I start an email quickly. I check my emails. Um, and then it's ages until I do another Pomodoro. How do you, do you fall over as well during those breaks? No, if I set out to do a block of Pomodoros, I complete the block. If you don't set a timer for your break, how can you expect to keep it to five minutes? Do you set a new timer for five minutes? Yes, most of the, you, you know, there's a lot of Pomodoro apps out there and we'll have a look at some of those. Most of those apps will support timing the actual Pomodoro and the break and the longer break. 
so it can guide you through the whole process. So if you're not doing that, if you're only setting 25 minutes, well, you need to be doing the other breaks as well. Awesome. All right, let's talk about the apps. Okay, great. Yeah, there's a there's a few apps um, that I've been using over the years. When I want a Kanban board, I tend to use Kanban Flow and also comes with a built-in Pomodoro timer. And this is really cool because it'll track how many Pomodoros you completed today for the week, for the month, for the year, and it gives you nice charts so you can see how you're progressing and what you're being focused on. There's also a cool little app called Forest. It has a built-in timer as well. Um, you can specify what it is you're focusing on. You can specify that you're gonna have a break. And one of the cool things about this is it'll actually grow a tree. If you drop out or cancel it, then the tree will die. And you might think, why is that cool? Well, because then you can see your progress as a tiny little forest. And so you can look at that for, for the day, what you were able to accomplish in a day in terms of the forest that you grow, or for the week, the month, the year, which is really cool. Actually, I've, I've got mine here. Well, I could tell you that when we started doing this presentation, I thought, oh, well, I'll be focused for the next 25 minutes. So I'll get myself an extra one because I... Got, you got me onto this, so I've got another one going at the moment. Okay, I don't have trees like that. <laughs> so it's a little, little forest, um, and that you know that's not that's not a week for me. That's what I've accomplished this year because I'm not always using Pomodoro. I really do use it for when I have trouble getting started, or when I really want to block out a lot of time just to focus. So that's a couple of apps for you, but it doesn't. These, these apps are good. It's it's good to use a Pomodoro timer because they'll track not only um, the you know the block of time, the twenty five minutes, but they'll also track the larger block and the breaks, and then they'll record the stats on it, so you can go back and view those. Do you ever use anything simpler like just the timer on your phone? Sometimes I'll just talk to Siri and I'll say, hey, start a timer for whatever. You have the Windows timer. We can set that up here. Call it Pomodoro, set it for 25 minutes, start it. And these things are great. Maybe you just have one thing to accomplish. But when you want to focus on a real whole block of tasks, an app is better because it can track the whole um, workflow. Right. Uh, for me, I, I wouldn't use those because I want, I think I like Fitbits and and things like that. I know I'm getting 10,000 steps. Uh, I think I like, you know, even if I say, all right, I'll, I'll tidy my room, I'll get rid of these books, instead of staying to read a book or do something, I will just yeah. focus on getting, getting it all cleaned up and I'll get myself an extra tree. So I, I think I'm stuck on the gamification side of things. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's motivated, motivating. We can see how much we've accomplished, even though, you know, we might have a big project that we're working on um, and, and we're far away from the end. Um, that's OK. We've grown this little forest, so that's cool, too. Notifications are difficult for me and I'm sure for everyone. Uh, one of the things I noticed that you seem to be still responsive during a Pomodoro, like I'll, I'll message you and you'll say, I'll, I'll call you back in 10. Yes. Okay. So when we're focused on a Pomodoro, it doesn't mean we're closed off to the world, but we are focused exclusively on the task at hand. So you do whatever you can. You, you know, set your phone to do not disturb. You turn on Windows 10 focus assist. You put on your headphones, maybe listen to a little bit of um, ambient um, background noise or some music that you do know, but still distractions will come up. And those distractions are not unimportant. So a phone call from you, um, usually that comes through Teams for me. Um, you don't tend to call me on the mobile. So I can just message you in Teams and say, hey, I'll give you a call in five minutes or 10 minutes. Um, and so to remember to do that, I'll have a little to-do list. And some people like to have a note um, that they write on on their piece of paper and they use that throughout the day and that's fine. I just like to use Microsoft to do. And so I'll say, um, give Adam a call back in 10 minutes. And so that way, I'm not going to forget about it. The same thing happens when I'm coding. So that's a that's an example of an external distraction, right? But there's internal distractions as well, and they might be even more powerful. Um, for example, if I'm coding something and I'm thinking about the task at hand, but then I realize, oh, I have to do this thing. And so it might be enable support for multi-currency. And I'll say to myself, hey, don't forget to enable support for multi-currency. And then I'll go back working on the task and I'll forget it. So what I do is I write it down on my focus list. Whenever my brain says, hey, don't forget to do this, I write it down. And that way I'm focused on the task at hand. And it, and it can be important things like that, but it can also be little things that are really a big distraction, like buy the new Agile book. 
instead of going off to Amazon and quickly buying the book, I just make a note. And if I want to accomplish some of these things in my five minute break or my bigger break, or I want to prioritize them for tomorrow, I can do that. They're in a place now where I'm not going to forget them. They're ready to go. Uh, that's very cool. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the things I did like about Pomodoro's that I'm trying to achieve my little goal. And I didn't, I don't do that, but I did, I did jot down little words on my piece of paper and uh, which, um, which takes me to the next bit about planning. Okay. And I don't know if this happens to you, but uh, I put in the morning, I use paper. I, I just write down a few things that I want to do because I look at my calendar, look at a few things and anything that where I want a Pomodoro, I put a big box on, right? So I want to do um, those. But when I do a Pomodoro, let's just say um, it's on a, uh, you know, a contract or a task or some coding, they always seem to need another Pomodoro and then another, and then my other Pomodoros slip down. Is that what happens to you? I think we're coming back to estimating here, right? Estimating is hard. Um, It's not a science, it's an art, and sometimes we get it wrong. And so if we need more time than we thought that's okay we can start another pomodoro if we need less time than we thought well we'll take we'll take the remaining 25 minutes whatever is left of that task and just improve whatever it is that we've done and so take a little bit extra time Um, so we try to get it right um, but yeah estimates are estimates and sometimes we get it wrong and it's okay to to take longer than we expect because well it's hard to do what do you think about um missing the serendipitous moments like if i'm in a i'm in a pomodoro i i notice that there's a few people around who aren't usually around i can drag them in and ask them for something that i've been wanting to do uh because i've grabbed i've got them do you think that you lose that um, no, I mean, you know, you're taking a break every 25 minutes with a longer break every two hours. So what's what's to miss, really? But look, you can cancel a Pomodoro. If something important comes up, then you cancel it. And do you have many cancellations? Um, no, not so many. I try not to cancel them. Um, but if I am distracted, if I do stop focusing on the task at hand, I always make sure to cancel it because, you know, um, the gamification aspect of the Pomodoro technique, if you've got an app like Forest that supports gamification that builds a forest based on the number of Pomodoros that you've accomplished, it's only meaningful if those trees were really planted when you focused. If you've got a tree, uh, let, let's say if you've got a forest filled with distracted trees, what's the point? You didn't accomplish those. Um, that You just let the timer run out while you're off making a coffee and having a chat in the kitchen. So you've been using this forever for a long time yeah at least 10 years and you're you're do, you're becoming more senior in your career you do um you know bigger bigger things than when you were younger are you using this more or less and does it how does it fit with your work after 10 years of practice i've become quite productive i'm able to focus on the task at hand usually with minimal effort but if there is something that I'm having trouble getting started with, if there's something that I'm procrastinating about, procrastinating about, um, then this is where I'll use the technique nowadays. Um, if I want to block out a whole series of time for some study or writing a blog post or um, or refactoring some code um, that, that I've been putting off, um, then this is where I'll employ the technique nowadays. Um, but generally speaking, you know, the Pomodoro technique is just one aspect of my productivity system Um, and I have a whole system that I maintain kind of on a daily and weekly basis to help me focus on the things that are important to me and so really you know what I do at the beginning of the day what I do at the end of the day what I do at the end of the week helps me to stay focused and to ensure that I'm meeting my priorities whether they're personal or work related. I might ask you uh, jumping away from your normal you know daily work um, where you're a consultant, some unusual things like you had to uh, do some Microsoft exams a week or two ago. You also had to write some rules a day or, a day or so ago. Did you use uh, Pomodoro's for both those events? Um, for the Microsoft exam, yeah, I, I, I did about 12 hours worth of Pomodoro's to prepare for that exam um, before I actually took and passed the exam. And so, yes, that helped me to, to prepare for the exam. Passed. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the cool thing was, and, and I guess it's after 10 years of practice, when I start the timer, I, there's like a little switch in my mind 
that just switches over to focus. All of the distractions, all of the fear of getting started, all of the procrastination just stops and I'm focused on the task at hand. And that's easy to do because really I'm only committed to it for 25 minutes. Right. Okay. Is there any final thoughts on this uh, Pomodoro stuff? I've been really busy for the past three years. Um, and so when I prioritize what it is that I want to focus on, I always try to find some time for work-life balance. And so this year I prioritized playing a few more video games and I've been, been quite successful. Um, I'm back now on projects and focusing on my open source work and my conferences and user group talks. Um, but it's been a good thing for me to have a break. So don't forget when you're planning out your priorities using the Pomodoro technique, it doesn't just have to be about work and study. It can be time boxing, something fun, something that you're excited about and looking forward to doing. Wow, that's a head spinning moment. I did not expect you to say you'd use Pomodoros to play video games. Yeah, sometimes. But anyway. Yes, I guess they should be used for exercises and other things like that too. It's about establishing what it is that you want to accomplish and and and, uh, and setting that time all right. And a time box can be a healthy thing, especially for something like video games. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jason. I'm really glad that we had this talk. I really think this um, will help uh, a lot of people. And, uh, you know, it's really nice that you share this stuff. So uh, put your comments uh, down below. Tell us what you think of this stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. This is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.